Well, I think 2015 marks the 24th consecutive year of uninterrupted economic growth in Australia, which is a feat that no other industrialised economy can match. But while growth continues, the drivers of that growth is starting to change. It's a dramatically changing business landscape and the huge shift in economic drivers for the economy means it's going to take a new level of innovative development from businesses of all shapes and sizes to continue that growth. The divergence between the mining and the non-mining states and territories in Australia continues, but now post the mining investment boom, it's the big non-mining state economies of New South Wales and Victoria that are outperforming in our business survey. Also, you've got a consumer that is still being impacted by lower wages growth, but more generally a fear feeling an anxiety around their perception of the elevated cost of living. But at the same time, there are two key offsets here. First is low interest rates, and they are certainly acting as a supporter to economic activity, but also the lower currency, which is really acting as a key stabiliser for the more trade-exposed parts of our economy. So on balance, we're growing increasingly more confident that that transition to the greater strength of non-mining activity in Australia is really starting to build momentum, particularly in regards to services. Clearly our future is heavily hinged upon our ability to generate new ideas, to be creative, to commercialise the ideas we have and generally to sort of foster a greater culture of innovation. Now in NAB we've done a survey recently of 1700 businesses where we really wanted to understand their perception of innovation in Australia collectively but also within their own business. But what exactly does innovation look like for you and your business? What was particularly encouraging in our survey is there was no shortage of innovative businesses across all segments of the economy, both very large business but also lots of small businesses. Um, not just in the more high tech parts of our economy, things such as telecommunications, but also amongst small business we found it in those parts of the economy under most competitive threats, so in manufacturing for example and retail. The other thing that's really exciting is because we did it as part of our business survey, we were able to objectively corral those people that said they were highly innovative in their opinion and compare them against their actual business conditions and their level of business confidence. And what it looks like is innovation makes really good business sense because typically those businesses were outperforming in their actual business conditions compared to the broader economy. For small business, the responses were much more varied. So for many small businesses, it was how close they were to their customer. For other small business it was just their drive and passion within the business. For others it was a digital platform and I think the important answer to that is there is not one answer to what innovation looks like but for small businesses it's a whole range of things depending on their particular strength but it, the customer centric focus was the one that really started to come to fore. Um, also understanding Asian markets and opportunities there were important. Things such as opportunities through food safety and security came forward but a whole range of things but I think the single greatest thing was an understanding of the customer and their needs going forward. Now to retail, which is in its own era of hyper-competitiveness, but with competition comes opportunity. There's some really exciting things happening in retail. I think retail is misunderstood. It's considered to be an industry in Australia which hasn't evolved very much, is not very innovative. We, on the other hand, see lots of opportunities there. If you look, for example, at online, for a long time traditional retailers really didn't embrace online retail. Now it's become a fundamental part of their strategy for a small and large business as a complement to their business strategy, not just as a threat. One of the most interesting things about online is 75% of online is based with domestic online retailers. 25% is international and offshore. One possibility there is there's a real trust element. People want to deal online, but particularly with domestic based online retailers. Isn't that incredible? 75% of online retail sales are in Aussie online stores. Looking further afield, the growing opportunity of Asian trade and export for small business is opening all sorts of doors for us. The real hope going forward is that the free trade agreements that we've signed with South Korea and Japan and China and now the Trans-Pacific Partnership will start to reduce the barriers of a range of things including services. I think there are certainly going to be opportunities but I also think that the really strong opportunities will largely lie in the services side of things which have had historically limited access to some of these markets. It will open up greater opportunities particularly in areas such as 
food. I mean, you look at Australia, a, a credible opportunity for premium products to be placed into that middle market, that growing Asian market. I think what's exciting about services is they already feature very prominently in our trade, but compared to many other industrialised economies, our trade in services is very narrow. It's largely centred around two segments. One's education-related travel, which is really a grab bag term for every cent a student spends when they're here from accommodation to transport to food entertainment, and also tourism. And one of the really important trends that's starting to emerge in tourism is the need for people to experience things when they travel. So not just what they actually see, but as well as that, what they do. And if you look at um, Chinese arrivals in Australia, for example, which are set to hit one million annually fairly soon, um, 30 to 40 per cent of those people are repeat visitors. And I think finally the last part of tourism that's underrepresented in this country is Indigenous tourism. Some of the research is showing a very large number of American visitors in particular are actively seeking out an Indigenous travel experience.